This month we're going to take a look at a different way to think about polynomials. We're going to start with this quadratic right here, x squared plus 6x plus k. We're told that its roots are in the ratio 2 to 1 and we want to find k. Now I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, hey, that obviously factors as x plus 2 times x plus 4 multiplied out. You get 8 as the answer. All right, all right, that's the right answer. But I want to take a closer look at why. How do we know this factors as x plus 2 times x plus 4? Now, that might teach us something important that we can use on harder problems. So where we're going to start here is we're going to say that the roots are a and b. So we can write this quadratic in factored form as x minus a times x minus b. And we're going to multiply this out and compare it to the quadratic they gave us. So we'll take See, we multiply both, multiply by x, we get x times x, we get x squared. Multiply minus a times x, we get minus ax. Multiply x times the minus b, we get a minus bx. Minus a times minus b, we get a plus ab. I'll go ahead and group these two terms together, these two x terms. We have x squared minus a plus b, the sum of the roots, times x plus ab. Now take a look at this view of the quadratic. The constant term is the product of the roots. The coefficient of x is the opposite of the sum of the roots. Really nice way to look at a quadratic. Now very important, what I just said is only true when the leading coefficient is 1. Now polynomials with the leading coefficient 1, they have a very special name. That name is monic. All right, it's not that special of a name. I'm only making a big deal of it here so that you remember that what I just said about the some of the roots in the product are only true when the leading coefficient is 1. All right, the coefficient of x is the opposite of the sum of the roots. Constant term is the product of the roots. Now let's use that here. Well, we've got the coefficient of x is 6, and we know that, well, that is the opposite of the sum of the roots. So now we know that the sum of the roots is negative 6. So we're looking for two numbers that sum to negative 6 that are in the ratio 2 to 1. There's your negative 2, negative 4. It doesn't really matter which order we put them in. Because whatever order we put them in, our constant term is the product of the roots, is negative 4 times negative 2. That gives us that 8 that some of you knew all along. But now we know something pretty, pretty important about how the coefficients of at least a quadratic are related to the roots. How we've encoded some information about the roots right there in the coefficients. And here's that harder problem I was talking about. We've got a quartic now. It's a fourth degree polynomial, and we want the sum of the reciprocals of the roots. Now, maybe you can find the roots of that. That looks like a lot of work. What I really like is some clever way to figure out what the sum of the reciprocals is without finding all those roots. Because these roots, these roots could be irrational. We're told that they're real, but they might be irrational. They have square roots in them. They might be really hard to find. If we could find a slick way to figure out this expression without ever finding the roots, that'd be awesome. We're going to start the same way we did back here. We wrote the polynomial, the quadratic, in terms of its roots factor. We're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to get a fresh board here because we're going to do a lot of work here. Yeah, I know I said we're trying to avoid a lot of work, but this is work you're only going to do once because then you're going to have a different way to look at polynomials. And you'll just jump straight to this on problems where it'll be helpful. So we're going to write this polynomial in factored form. Its roots are a, b, c, and d, so here are our factors. Now I'm going to multiply this out and just start with just the first two. We've already done that, so we can go ahead and write down what that is when we multiply it out. We got it x squared minus ax minus bx plus ab. We already did that, and then we're going to go through and multiply that by x minus c, and then we're going to hit it with x minus d. So we're going to first multiply all this by x minus c. We'll forget about that for just a moment. So first step is to multiply each one of these by x. We'll have x cubed minus ax squared minus bx squared. I'm going to leave a space there because I know minus cx squared is coming. But I still have to multiply this ab times this x. I'll have plus abx sitting over here. So I've multiplied all these by x. Now I'm going to multiply everything by the minus c. And there's my minus cx squared falling into place. Multiply out here, I'm going to get plus acx. I'm going to get a plus bcx. Then I'm going to have a minus abc. And I have to remember I've still got my x minus d. I'm going to drop that down here for a minute because I want to talk about this. Take a look at that. 
just look kind of, kind of familiar, kind of similar. Like we've got our x cubed at front. That's not too surprising. Then look at our x squared. Minus a, minus b, minus c. Put that together. Coefficient of x squared is the opposite of the sum of the three roots, a, b, and c. If we just forget about that x minus d for a minute. Now let's go to that coefficient of x. Well, now I have the roots taken two at a time. a, b, a, c, b, c. Get all those products, add them up. That's my coefficient of x. And then out here, my constant term is now the opposite of the product of the roots. So we get a nice little pattern here, very similar to the pattern we found for the quadratic. And so we know what pattern we're going to expect to get when we come out here and multiply by this last, this x minus d. So let's do that. We're going to first multiply everything here by x. And we'll start off with our x to the fourth minus, you know what? I see where this is going. I see where this is going right now. Minus ax cubed minus bx cubed minus cx cubed. So I'm going to go ahead and group them right at the beginning. We'll forget about this for a minute. Rather than writing my minus ax cubed minus bx cubed minus cx cubed, I'm going to go ahead and group them right away. And I'm going to leave that gap there because I know a minus dx cubed is coming. So now I'm going to take this x. I, go, I multiply each of these three terms. I already did this one. So now I'm going to do each of these. I'm going to get a bunch of x squared terms here. I'm going to group those two. I'm going to group those. I'm going to have an abx squared term. I'm going to have an acx squared term. I'm going to have a bcx squared term, but I'm going to leave that gap there because I know that ad is going to fall into place. I'm going to get a bunch more x squared terms down the line, so I'm going to leave some space. And finally, I'm going to get next term right there, minus abc times x, and of course we're going to group those as well. We're going to have some more of those. All right, so that's what I get. I get all these terms down here when I multiply everything up here by x. Now let's multiply everything by minus d. So I got minus d times x cubed minus dx cubed. That falls right in the place as expected. Now I'm going to multiply by each of these. I'm going to get an adx squared, bdx squared, cdx squared, and those fall into place very nicely right in here in my x squared row. And I'm going to multiply each of these by d, and that's going to give me a bunch of x terms down here. I'm going to get my minus abd, acd. I've got my minus sitting out here and bcd and then finally minus d times minus abc that gives me plus a b c d and now we see how the coefficients of this quartic are related to the roots once again monic quartic we got a one sitting out here the coefficient of x cubed is the opposite of the sum of the roots Coefficient of x squared is we take all the roots, take all the product, pairwise products, take two roots at a time, multiply each possible pair, add them all up. That gives us our coefficient of x squared. Take them three at a time. That gives us our coefficient of x. We need to remember the negative here. And then finally, our constant term is just the product of all the roots. Now, we were looking for the sum of the reciprocals. We were looking for 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c plus 1 over d. I don't see that anywhere here. We can write this with a common denominator. Of course, that common denominator is going to be a, b, c, d. And our numerator, well, the numerator here is b, c, d plus a, c, d plus a, b, d and then plus a, b, c. And that is sitting right here. This expression right here is the opposite of the coefficient of x. And well, the denominator, well, let's look back at that polynomial. The denominator is just the constant term. The coefficient of x is 7. The constant term is negative 4. So I come back here. The coefficient of x was 7. My numerator is the opposite of that. It's negative 7. And the constant term was 4. That's my denominator. So my answer is just 7 fourths. You didn't have to find the roots at all. And once you start looking at polynomials like this, you'll be able to see a problem like this and just write the answer down. Because you'll see how information about the roots is encoded in the coefficients of the polynomial we wrote down right here. Then I want you to go back and think about what happens when this coefficient is not 1. Then things change, but only a tiny little bit. And you'll figure that out. And I got one more thing for you to figure out. We were given a polynomial here. Given a polynomial, and we wanted to find the sum of the reciprocals of its roots. 
But wouldn't it be cool if we could just write down a polynomial, a new polynomial, whose roots are those reciprocals? And then you can use that other thing. You're going to figure out when the, what happens when this isn't monic. You're going to use that to immediately figure out what the sum of the roots of that new polynomial is. Right? There's a very quick way to find that new polynomial. And you're going to discover that and find possibly even a slightly faster way to solve this problem.